You don't always want to play the chords as written. You want to be creative with them, especially if you're improvising an intro or making your own chord melody arrangement. A 251 shouldn't sound like this. And in fact, there are some beautiful variations on the basic 251 that you can check out and add to your vocabulary. And that's what I want to show you in this video so that you can take the chords, interpret them, be creative, and turn them into beautiful harmony. My name is Jens Larsen. Learn jazz, make music. So I'm going to start with this basic 251, and then I'm going to show you how you can add chords to it, how you can walk around the key, walk a little bit outside of the key as well, to create some really beautiful progressions. The first few examples are diatonic to C major, and then we start moving into using modal interchange and a few chromatic passages as well. This is a really simple but actually very powerful concept. We just take the original progression, which is moving from D minor 7 to G7, and then we're just walking from D minor to G7 by filling in diatonic passing chords. So we turn it into D minor 7, to E minor 7, to F major 7, and to G7. And having a stepwise bass melody like this is something that sounds very natural and very strong. In this video, the main emphasis for me is to create chord progressions that sound surprising, but also really natural, have a natural flow and sound like strong, solid chord progressions. And you will hear that you can actually take that pretty far later in the video. It doesn't work to walk down the scale from the two chord, but since F major 7 is also a subdominant chord, then we can start on that and then walk down to the D minor 7 and in that way get this progression. Because the bass melody is still moving either stepwise or in fourth intervals, then this really sounds like a strong progression. Let's look at what happens once you start to shift out of the key. This progression starts off like the first example, so we're just walking up the scale, but then it actually turns into parallel moving minor chords that takes us to the four minor chord and to the backdoor dominant before resolving back to the tonic chord. Now this way of reharmonizing actually changes the dominant function to a minor subdominant, but very often that's something that works really well. This chord progression is coming from the minor key, which isn't surprising, it starts on the four minor chord, but it's actually derived from a fairly common progression that moves from the four minor to the five back to the tonic. And the way you would see that in the original version would be F minor to F minor with E flat in the bass to D half diminished to G7. And in this example, that's reharmonized. So I'm harmonizing the bass line, the E flat with an E flat minor chord, and I'm turning the D half diminished into a D minor seven chord because I want to have some parallel minor chords moving. But it's still a very smooth, very great progression to use. And you can actually just throw it in instead of a two five very often. This progression neatly borrows a twist from Coltrane, similar to what he's using in Countdown, which is really a reharmonization of the song tune up. Here I'm shortening the progression so that it fits in two bars and I'm doing that using the fact that A flat major 7 is great to insert before a G7. You could also see this progression as a variation on D minor 7, A7, D minor 7 to G7, which is a way of extending the D minor 7, the suspension of the dominant chord. This is really just the second example, except now I'm borrowing it from E flat major or C minor. So I'm just taking the entire progression and moving it to another key, and then using the fact that the backdoor dominant is also a great way to resolve back to C major. Again, turning it into a minor subdominant progression rather than a dominant resolution. And if you analyze this in C major rather than in E flat, where it kind of pretends to be, then you get a much more complicated analysis, but it still sounds great.
the most common way to use chromatic 2.5s is of course to use the one that's a half step above the target 2.5. So in this case, that would be E flat minor, A flat seven to D minor seven, G seven. And you also have the moment's notice variation, which is from a half step below. So D flat minor seven to G flat seven, resolving up to D minor seven, G seven. In this case, I actually changed the 2.5, so it's not really a 2.5 anymore. I turned them into major seven chords, but the advantage to this is that it actually fits with a lot of melodies that would normally just be on the 2.5. So you can insert those as a sort of suspension on top of a 2-5 and still get it to work with the melody. And because I'm using chords that are both from the minor key and also a chord progression that actually makes sense with E flat moving to A flat, then it doesn't matter that I'm changing them to major seven chords. As you can tell, I'm using functional harmony to create these reharmonizations. And functional harmony is a great tool for creating chord progressions that are not only fresh sounding and surprising, but also really make sense to the ear. And if you want to dig deeper into how to use that, check out all the options and the different functions that you have available, then check out this video where I'm covering that in quite a lot of detail. Who is your favorite guitar player when it comes to chord melody?